Okay, so let's get into the best of the best. And I'm good, like I said. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to part three, the final part of everything I read in 2021 that I loved. There were so many great books this year. I tried to keep it brief. I did not succeed at doing that. So without any further ado, we're gonna jump into part three. If you missed parts one and two, I will link them down below for you guys. But let's see what made the top of my list. Another character who definitely I was cheering for and loved and took me by surprise is Paloma from My Sweet Girl by Amanda J. Atisa. So this one is dual timelines. I almost said dual points of view. It's dual timelines. And we are following this woman named Paloma. So when she was younger, she was living at an orphanage in Sri Lanka. She was adopted and moved to California with her family. So when the book opens, she is in San Francisco and she has this new roommate who is kind of an awful human being because he's blackmailing her because he's found out something from her past that could basically destroy her present. So she is basically getting money at the bank so she can pay him off. And she comes home and she finds him dead at the kitchen table, like murdered dead. And she does not know what happened. So she runs away. And when the police finally do come, the body is missing. And this roommate of hers doesn't exist. Like they cannot find his name. They cannot trace him. And Paloma is starting to wonder what's going on. Who's messing with her? Is she imagining things? Is something from her past back to haunt her? And she embarks on this mission to figure out legit what is going on. And she's being haunted by her past and she is flashing back. So we get to see her life in the orphanage and then we get to see her present day as she's trying to figure out what's happening. And I very much enjoyed this book. I thought it was really creepy and dark and it's such a great character and Paloma, has like all those dark messed up thoughts and she doesn't always vocalize them but she like says the things you wish you could say and i just thought the story was so well crafted and i absolutely love the writing this is another debut uh so many beautiful debuts this year and i'm excited for everything that she's gonna write next the cover is absolutely stunning but i had heard about this from abby at crime by the book early on so this came out in september and I had had this on my wish list like back over the summer because I had heard such great things about it. So it's just, again, it's so great. It's all about the past catching up with you. And what are you going to do about it? Huh? So good. It wouldn't be a year on list without an actual official entry from Riley Sager. So here is Survive the Night. I very much enjoyed this book, you guys. I really did. When I started it, I fully was like, I'm not sure about this book. But I hit a point in this book, and it wasn't like a plot point or a twist or a reveal or anything like that. But I hit a point in the book where I was like, okay, I know he's not going to lead me astray. I'm going to surrender to Riley. I'm going to surrender to the story. And I started to get what he was doing, not in like a final twist kind of a way, but I was like, okay, I get what's happening here, and I'm giving into it. And I just, this is like a no pun intended thing, like enjoyed the ride. So this is 1991. We have the rideshare board. We have Nirvana. They've got George Bush in the White House. And our main character, Charlie, her roommate has just been murdered by a rumored serial killer on campus. Charlie is struggling with grief. She has to get out of there. And she just wants to flee. Like she just needs to go home to see her grandmother. So to quote Riley Sager, this is Little Red Riding Hood. So off to grandmother's house she goes. So she winds up going to the college ride board. She sees this guy, Josh. He is also going her way and they leave that night. And not too far into the ride, she starts to think that maybe she's in the car with her roommate's killer. And this becomes the claustrophobic, caught in the car, wild ride of a story. And it's 1991, so there's no texting. There's no getting out of this. It's pay phones. It's, you know, survival skills. It's all those kinds of things. And then sort of the added homage that he does in this book of his love of movies is Charlie has her own baggage from the past. And 
from the time that she was a child, her way of coping with super stressful situations is she starts to see her life as a movie and a switch flips in her mind and suddenly everything becomes a movie and she can't tell the difference between reality and the movie in her mind. And it becomes just sort of this very fun ride as she's trying to figure out what's really happening and what she imagining happening. And this is a book where I would just say, give into it. And I know a lot of people didn't like this book, which is fine. I'm not here to convince you to like it, but I very much loved his love of movies. I love this homage to the movies. He pokes fun at himself in a couple different ways. And like the music was on point. I think there was a real nostalgia of this time for me also, but I had a fun time with it. And again, when I first started reading it, I was a little bit nervous about it because it felt familiar to me, I think is how I described it in a, not quite like a deja vu, but in a like, oh, like I've seen this story before. Like the silly girl gets in the car with the man she doesn't know and bad things happen, shocker, shocker. But he does things with this to sort of nod and wink to all the tropes, but also I feel like to do his own twist on the tropes, if that makes sense. But I do, I love him, I love him. Is it better than Final Girls? No. Did I still very much enjoy the book? Absolutely. Will I continue to read everything he ever writes ever? You betcha. And then another book that I read towards the end of this year, and as I look back, so when I was doing this the first time around, I realized the books that I had left for the end were all black, white, and gold. And at the time, it's a little bit later, but I had painted my nails black, white, and gold for the holidays just because I thought it was gonna be fun. And then I was like, oh my God, I painted my nails, and then I look at all these books, and they're reflective of my fingernails, so having nothing to do with that, is The Darkness by Ragnar Jonasson. So I read this in November. This is the first in a series. This is the first book of his that I have read, and I am hooked. I just finished reading The Island a couple days ago, which is book number two in this series, and I loved it, you guys. And that very easily could have been on this list as well, but I'm gonna pay homage to the first in the series. And this is set in Iceland. It's dual timelines. We have a police investigator, Holda, that we're following. She's near the end of her career and she is being forced out early into retirement and she doesn't want to go. And it is as much of a mystery and an investigation as it is the story of this woman who was at a point in her life where she doesn't know who she is without this job. She doesn't know who she is without being a detective. And it's a reflection on her career but also as much as they're like, kind of like, here's your two weeks notice, you can just pack up and go. She's not going out that way and she winds up taking on one last case that she wants to take. And they're very much like, whatever, whatever, do whatever you want. And she looks into this case that was kind of like, quote unquote, solved, but she never bought into this, like the resolution of this case. So a Russian woman washes up on the shore in Iceland and her death was very quickly ruled a suicide. The case was closed very quietly and sort of tucked away. And now we have another woman who has gone missing and Holda is convinced the two cases are connected and that the investigation in the first case was not accurate. So she starts to dig into this. So we see the two points or the two timelines of what happened in the past and what happened in the present. And we see Holda's investigation and we see her struggling, like I said, with sort of her place in life and where she fits in and what happens now. And I thought it was a really interesting look at you know, not to say like women in the workplace, but women in the workplace in a very male dominated environment and very male dominated industry, what she has been exposed to, what she's put up with, what she has been the victim of being a woman in this industry and really being put out to pasture and being told that she's too old and it's over and they just want a younger model to come in and really trying to figure out what that means for her at this point in her life. And what is brilliant about this series, and I will not, of course, tell you anything that you don't want to need to slash should know is that there's three books in this series and they're told in reverse order. So we see Holda at the end of her career in this one and then book number two goes back to it starts in 1987 and then we have a 10 year time jump to 1997. So in the island you start to see things that play out in this book and you see things that you're discussed in this book actually happening in that one. So I'll find out what happens in the mist, obviously, when I tell you guys that's book number three. And I'll let you know, but I was totally hooked by his writing. I love his writing, this female character. I thought he just nailed it and grasps, grasped her so well. And I am an instant fan of his. Okay, so we're down to my final four and I'm gonna present them in no particular order, but here we go. So the first one I have 
is an absolute five star for me. I read this as part of my five star predictions. I buddy read this with Sarah and Lindsay, and this is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This book was so beautiful in the writing, in the storytelling. I refused for some reason to dog ear it, so I tabbed it, not in like a proper kind of a way. I cried, I loved this book so much. B.E. Schwab spent 10 years writing this book. I listened to so many interviews with her, you guys, and so many stories about how this book came to be. And you can see it in every choice she made for the characters and every word she chose. Like you can feel the love that went into this story and you can feel the passion that she put into this. And again, you talk about, like I was saying with Jennifer Hillier and the Riley Sager book, the risks that were taken, the putting yourself all in and the really just like the bleeding on the page that she did in this book. And I thought it was just absolutely outstanding. I am not a huge V.E. Schwab reader. I read Vicious. I'm a huge fan of her as a writer. And I come to her work, I think from like a different perspective because I'm not as familiar with her other series. But this book was just so, well, oh, like just blew me away. So this is about our friend Addie and Oh, the book opens in France. It's 1714 and she is about to get married and she does not want to be married. She wants to be free. She wants to be independent. She wants to live her life and she is so desperate to break away from this and to find any way out of this marriage. So Eddie runs into the woods and she's just screaming for help for anyone who will help her and she has been warned not to pray to the gods who answer after dark but that's exactly what happens and it's exactly what she does and he grants her her wish to not get married and he makes her immortal but there is a hitch to this wish that she didn't know about at the time. And it's that she will never be remembered. So anyone she meets, if she leaves the room, they won't remember her again. When she shows up on her parents' doorstep, they don't know who she is. When she goes to visit her best friend, she has no memory of who she is. And Addie is all alone in the world, but she has the freedom to do all the things she ever wanted to do. And we follow Addie through so many different times in her life. So we have a past point of view and then we get a present point of view, which is 2014 in New York City. She goes to a bookstore and she returns the next day to the same bookstore, which is kind of the thing that she does. Nobody remembers her. She goes to the same places over and over again. But when she comes back the second day, the guy behind the counter, Henry, remembers her from the day before. And Addie is completely awestruck because no one has ever remembered her in her life. And what is it about Henry that he can remember her? So it's this beautiful story between the two of them. He is such an amazing character. I love him to pieces. And I will say when the book first started, I'm not a huge historical fiction reader in any way, and I do not consider Malibu Rising historical fiction, my friends. So I did struggle a bit with the past timeline until I got into a groove with it. So I was off to a little bit of a slow start Every time we were in 2014, I was like, yes, here we go. And then we would flip back to something and I was like, no, why are we here? But I eventually hit a stride with it and then very much appreciated how she did the past timeline and the different historical moments that happened and ones that were maybe fictionalized. And it becomes a question of like what was real and what isn't real and what she wrote. And not in the sense of like it didn't happen historically, but how she wove together sort of fact and fiction in the past to ground it in a certain way. But I loved this book so much. I'm definitely going to be rereading it. Julia Whalen does the audiobook, so I want to re-listen to it, or I want to listen to it. And then, you guys know if you follow me, I also picked up the special edition UK version, which is absolutely stunning. It's autographed. It's got pictures on the inside. I will not dog ear it, I promise you guys. But it's just so beautifully done. It's such a perfect story. And I just love it so much. I had to have, I had to have it. I've gone on a bit of a spiral of picking up special editions of books. But anyway, I'm keeping this one too because this is the one I read. <laughs> and I loved it so much. So yay for Addie LaRue. The next book is my only nonfiction book on the list this year, and it's The Storyteller by Dave Grohl. I did not expect to love this book as much as I did. I thought this was going to be like a fun, rockin', rock biography time from one of my most favorite people. I love Nirvana. I love the Foo Fighters so much. I am blown away by Dave Grohl as a drummer, as a guitarist, as a singer, as a lyricist. And I thought this was just gonna sort of be like a fun wild ride through their rise to fame and what it was like to be in Nirvana and what it was like to start Foo Fighters and just all the stuff. And this is a family, it's all those things, 
but it is also such a love story to his wife and his mother and his daughters and his friends and how all these people supported him and influenced him and at the risk of like sounding cliche made him who he is today and it is about his complete dedication his inability to give up his re like refusal to give up and everything he did from a very young age when he first discovered punk how he taught himself to drum like on pillows on his bed and how he just took risks and just did all the things to get to where he is but he also talks about the overwhelm of Nirvana and the fear of starting over and the pain of losing Kurt Cobain. And there's a beautiful chapter in here that talks about when Kurt passed away and also when his best friend Jimmy passed away. I cried when I was reading this book and I remember watching a Storytellers on VH1 so many years ago. I missed that show so much. And he was talking about that song, My Hero, and everybody just assumed it was about Kurt. And he said in that it was about so many people, but it was also just about like very regular friends who are his heroes. And I a thousand percent believe that song is about his friend Jimmy, who he grew up with and was just such a huge influence on his life. And I love it. There's definitely some wild stories in here. They got up to some crazy stuff. The interactions he's had with so many other celebrities, the fact that he's friends with Paul McCartney is like so flipping cool but I just love him so much and he could write 10 more books filled with stories. So I wound up listening to the audiobook of this and then I purchased the book while I was listening to it because I was like, there's so many beautiful passages and quotes in here, which shouldn't surprise me because his lyrics are everything. There's pictures in here, which are great. And I just love it so much. This is a book that I will revisit and reread. And I just love his love of family and such gratitude and appreciation and humbleness. And he just seems like a really regular dude that you could hang out with too. So he definitely honors his journey and what got him there and who got him there. And just has such warmth to him and such love for so many people. This book is outstanding, you guys. He narrates the audiobook too. So definitely worth listening to that one as well. And then the next book I have, which will also be no surprise to anyone, is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This one just crushed it for me. I love everything about this book. This is the debut, which blew my mind. We have friends from college, past, present. They met first day of freshman year. It's all those dynamics I talked about, the relationships, the intensity, the competition, the wanting to get along. There's an incestuous nature to this group. It's a co-ed group of friends. And then their senior year, one of the friends was murdered and another friend in the group was arrested but never convicted because there wasn't enough evidence at the time. So the murderer has never been found. So it definitely rings feelings of If We Were Villains by ML Rio. It also gives me hunting party vibes. It gives me in a dark, dark wood vibes with those dynamic, competitive, twisted female friendships. And we are at the reunion, so very much like the girls are also nice here, somebody at the reunion wants them to pay for what they did back in college. And we just get twists and lies and messy people and dark decisions and bad decisions. And I just loved everything about this. And it's who you were when you met and who you want to be now. And people with their facades and people not being who you think they are. And how this group of friends who gradually over time sort of drifted away from each other because of what happened are brought back together and how much they need each other to literally like get through this reunion. But I was blown to bits by this book. I think she is such a talented writer. I cannot believe this is a debut. And it's everything I want in a book and then more. This is one of those books where I closed it and I wanted to reopen it and start all over again. I will definitely be rereading this book. I just thought she killed it with this book and I can't wait to read more from her this year. I have one book to go and my battery is flashing, so I'm gonna change it and I'll be back. Okay guys, last book. This is one of the first books I read in 2021 and as I was reading it, I knew it was absolutely gonna be on my best of list and I never would have predicted this. This was another one of those books that I heard a lot of people talking about. I got super curious about it. I didn't wanna miss out on it. I borrowed it from my library and I instantly was like, nope, I need to own this myself because I love this book that much and I'm not even a little bit of the way into it, but I was instantly obsessed. Wait for it. It's Lore by Alexandra Bracken. I loved this. This was pitched as like Hunger Games with Greek mythology. 
It's basically all I wanted to know. And I loved everything about this book. I did not expect to fall so deep in love with it. I watched and listened to so many interviews with Alexandra Bracken. This on a very Addie LaRue level is such a love story of her writing and her passion for these characters, for Greek mythology. Greek mythology, <laughs> the amount of research that went into this book. And I definitely feel like she poured everything she had into this and it shows. So this book, genius. I just absolutely love this book. Absolutely love this book. So in this book, every seven years for seven days, the nine original Greek gods were forced to walk the earth as mortals. And they were being punished by Zeus for a past rebellion. And there is a group of people who are descendants who are out to hunt them. So for these seven days, these gods become mortal. And if you kill them, you then take their power. So if you kill Aphrodite, you take on her powers. But then if somebody kills you, they become like the new Aphrodite. And it has been war and bloodshed. And obviously, I think Hunger Games kind of a mess of things. So our main character is Lore. And several years ago, her family was murdered by a rival line. And she had sort of danced the line of wanting to get revenge and ultimately decides to just walk away from all of it. So she just wants to leave that behind. She doesn't want to have anything to do with it. And she has gone on to live sort of a very quiet life for herself in New York City. But here we are in the present day and the Agon is in New York City. And she comes home one night to find Athena, one of the original Greek gods, bleeding on her front doorstep and asking for her help. So Athena asks her to bind your fate to mine and she promises that if Laura helps her, Athena will help her escape this for good. So the two start to work together. And there are so many amazing characters in this. There's so much great story to this. This is kind of like from House Apollo, where like we are grounded in reality in New York City. So there's so much familiarity to it. But we are also in this other world where this Agon is happening in Central Park and like in all these different places around the city. And I just loved it so much. I did not know where this book was gonna go. There were so many unexpected things that happened in this. I had so many emotions I didn't expect to have over this book. When I was growing up, I talked about this all the way at the beginning of the year. I was in a program and we did these Greek mythology studies. So I have the book that she references that she used to you know, help do research here. I was doing research on Greek mythology. I got super interested in it. It definitely was fascinating to me. And I just loved this book so much. It's smart. There's great characters. This is a standalone book, which I both love and hate because a standalone means all bets are off. But at the same time, I don't want to end my life or I don't want my time with these characters to ever end. So I definitely want to go back and read this one again. I will say this was a book that had a ton of characters in it and it did take me a while to get some like footing. I'm not a huge fantasy reader so I definitely don't have like my fantasy feet on but once I got into the groove of things it started to make more sense to me. I do think I'll get more out of it the second time around. There's also like a little glossary in the back of the different Greek gods and like I said I was referring to the book that I already owned at the time but it gives you a little bit of a history there and then there's also a list of all of the the living and dead lines of the legacies who are out to kill the Greek gods. So it's so well done. It's, it's friendship, it's family, it's, you know, things being tested and people being tested and like you think you know, but you have no idea kind of a thing. And I just loved it so, so much. Highly, 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 highly recommend this book. And it's so crazy to me. I picked this up on a whim back in January and here we are, technically it's January 2022, spoiler alert, because I'm refilming this video, but this book is top of the list and I just couldn't be happier about it. I just loved it so much. So that's gonna do it for all of the books that I read this year that I loved to pieces. Let me know you guys which ones you loved, what your favorite books of the year were. And thank you so much for spending today with me, for spending any and all part of the past year with me and for being here. I really, really appreciate it. I love being able to chat books with you guys and I'm so grateful for all of you. So thank you again for hanging out today. And if you haven't seen the other videos, I will link them all down below and I will see you guys for another video really soon. Bye everybody.